Hey friends, my name is Gio and I'm here to explore the frontier of AI art and design for nuggets to help you grow your creative career. Today I'll show you a step-by-step -step creative process that combines multiple AI and digital painting applications including Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, Procreate, Photoshop, and Figma. I'll be using these tools to make a digital painting of my original characters, and along the way I'll share AI techniques that you can use to speed up your workflow and keep you in the zone jamming on the parts of your workflow that you most enjoy. So let's hit it! So here's an example of staying in the fun part of your workflow. I think figure drawing is super fun and expressive personally. I've done a lot of figure drawing practice, not as much as some, but enough to enjoy the loose flow state of it. I'll pose with my own body and think how it fits together to best express the vibe I'm going for. And I like to start with the seed in my imagination as the basis for the AI powered parts of the workflow rather than starting from the AI. So instead of feeling like the AI is replacing me, it feels like it's a magnifying glass to amplify the beam of that initial impulse of imagination. And rather than use the AI to skip over the parts of the workflow I most enjoy, I'm using it to speed up the parts that I don't mind taking a little less time. Next, we're going to generate a background in Midjourney. This is a great use case for Midjourney. You can quickly ideate on cool background ideas with just text prompts. And at this stage, I want to loosen the reins a bit and let the AI do some of the thinking for me. This is a subjective task, so I want the AI to generate a bunch of different directions that I can further explore with another wave of generation as I get more inspiration from the outputs. This part feels a little bit like playing jazz, experimenting and following my intuition. I'll try a few different prompts, check out the outputs, then paste the outputs I like from one prompt into one of the other prompts. So I'm kind of mixing it all together until I land on one that feels right. And as far as the creative brief, I want this garden to be bright and energetic to contrast with the dreary prison these characters have to survive in during the day. So now I've got a sketch for my character and a rough draft for my background, and I want to take it into Stable Diffusion for refinement using the automatic 1111 interface. I've played with this enough by now that I feel more confident in what I expect the AI outputs to be, so they're more targeted, with fewer shots required to hit what I'm aiming for. I feel like this illustrates what our AI augmented workflows may increasingly look like. Each stage might be a kind of interplay between the roles of the human artist and the AI. In this example, we're starting out more targeted with a character sketch serving as the initial instructions, and then we flow into this more open-ended ideation phase in Midjourney. Then zoom in to get more targeted AI refinements again in Stable Diffusion. So there's this kind of rhythm of expand, contract, expand, contract. Some of the positive impact of AI on artist workflows is that we can use it to approach and solve different kinds of problems at different stages of a project, and decide which parts we want to do ourselves because we know exactly what we're going for. For example, I love using Midjourney to make backgrounds, but so far I've decided it's not my favorite tool for making characters. I feel like no matter how many tricks I pick up about how to get more control, it's still just too unpredictable right now, so it's still faster and more enjoyable for me to draw that separately and feed it to Stable Diffusion. And just look at the Stable Diffusion imagery, I mean the quality and the speed and the volume of the output here is just amazing. It makes me take a step back and just think about this time that we're living through right now. To use a phrase I've heard going around lately, it's kind of crazy to think that this is the worst the tech will ever be from this moment on. That just captures my imagination as a creator, thinking about all the different ways I can use this. If you feel the same way and appreciate how much effort goes into making content like this, I'd be so grateful if you'd gently smash the like button. Quick side note about using the image to image tab in Stable Diffusion, I'm scrolling down and adjusting the denoising slider, setting it to about 4 will keep the outputs pretty close to the original reference image, and setting it to about 7 will give it a little bit more free reign for variation without going too far off the rails. Next I'm laying these AI images out in Figma, which has an infinite canvas so that I can zoom in and out and analyze them spatially. This helps me compare them at a glance from different elevations to quickly make decisions about which parts I like from which image, and even which to use as a base to layer the others on top of. 
I love using Figma in both art and design, and I've used it to earn hundreds of thousands of dollars working in tech as a UX designer. I'll probably do a video dedicated to Figma soon. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more design and financial focused content on this channel. For now, I'm creating a base for the image that I'll eventually send back to Procreate for painting in the final details, because, again, I really enjoy that part. I'm using AI to speed up this middle portion of the project, because rendering light and shadow is fun for a while, but for me, I'd rather spend more time on the other stages. So now I'm pasting the keepers into Photoshop to lay out the basic composition. Here I'm using the paint daubs filter to reduce the focus of the background so it looks like it's off in the distance more. I'm going back into Stable Diffusion again briefly to get a more atmospheric hazy background and wash out enough saturation to keep the focus on the main character in the foreground. I'm liking the serendipitous addition of the bridge as a grounding compositional element in the garden background, so I'm going to roll with that. Call it a Bob Ross style happy accident. And now I'm cutting and pasting pieces from the generated images that I like and then painting out the seams with masks to fade them into place. I'm using soft brushy strokes at mid opacity, trying to merge the new layers into the main base. Using the Photoshop object selection tool is another good example of AI saving me time from doing something finicky, like trying to precisely select these edges. I'm basically looking for two good images and then using the mask to crossfade between them into a combination that's somewhere in between, which simultaneously creates something new and my own unique choice. With the base completed, I've exported it back into Procreate for final paint over because fun. Now that I'm transitioning to this last stage of the work, I thought I'd switch gears, share some life experience that I think is relevant to the ongoing discussion of how AI is going to impact our incomes as creatives in the short term. You know, on the one hand, I hear all of these understandably anxious conversations about how our cherished workflows are going to be taken away from us. And I think the flip side is that for people who are just sort of discovering their own creative side, AI is this amazing new world that opens all these new avenues to explore, and personally that's exciting for me too. But whether you're established in the field or you're just starting your career, I think we all know there's this wave of change washing over us right now. Like suddenly employers who might have hired 10 artists are now only going to need one. So as a result, there's going to be this overwhelming saturation of generated media and art and music and animation, and the idea is that demand goes down and it loses value because the market is so glutted. But here's my take. I didn't get into digital art because I thought it was going to make me wealthy. Like everyone knows, that's just not really likely to happen. And that's why there's this whole stereotype of the starving artist. And you know, sure, there are some extreme exceptions here and there, but I don't think people choose the life path of an artist because they think it's paved with riches like Wall Street banking or something. I dug into it because I just actively enjoyed doing it. 
And from a young age, I thought, hey, as long as I can earn enough for rent and groceries, then that's enough to keep me doing it. I always enjoyed the creative flow state of making things and the responses it draws from people when I share what I'm working on. And over time, that became a deeply rooted part of my identity, tied up in my sense of life purpose, and I think that's probably true for a lot of us. But as I got older, I realized that just eking out a living wasn't the kind of life I wanted to have as creative. And it might be tough to stare it in the face, but ultimately I came to see art as a vitamin and not as a painkiller. Entrepreneur people use this metaphor of vitamins versus painkillers to decide what product or service they want to sell in their business because people are just more motivated to buy things that alleviate pain or solve immediate problems in their lives, and that affects the demand and value people place on it, right? I mean, maybe you've lived a different story, but in my honest life experience, art by itself usually just didn't pay enough to truly thrive, either as an independent creator or as a staff artist with a legit job in a studio. Like survive, maybe, sure, but I'm talking about earning more than I needed, socking away money for emergencies, money for retirement that compounds and makes more of itself while I sleep. And I don't think artists want to hear that, because deep down inside we want to believe that we can break through and be one of those rare exceptions. It's like this flavor of the American dream, success through hard work. But I've learned that picking the right direction to start digging towards that success is even more important than how hard you shovel to get there. Because when I pivoted into a design career track, it was just suddenly like moving with the flow of a river instead of fighting the current, both in terms of how long it took to land the jobs and how much they paid. That gave me a cushion to absorb sudden shocks, and so much of the stress that came from the creative lifestyle just evaporated. And that was a pretty amazing feeling to have that kind of relief and peace come into my life after a period of really struggling through this dark night of the soul kind of chapter in life. So to bring it back to art and AI, this is one of those sudden shocks that we have no real control over, the way that these AI tools are suddenly disrupting creative industries. There's a Hollywood Writers Guild strike happening right now as I record this, that's a good example. And I know that there are especially a lot of younger artists who are just starting their careers, and there's this real sense of despair that comes from all the ways AI is disrupting the life path that they'd imagined for themselves. Adam Duff on his channel Lucid Pixel shared a story recently about going through something similar when he graduated art school as a 2D animator, and then 3D animation and Toy Story disrupted the industry, and it forced him to adapt his expectations for his career path. And there's this kind of emotional learning curve there. And now it's happening again with the emergence of AI in our lifetimes. So artists are concerned that the skills they've spent their adult lives cultivating are going to be obsolete and they're angry at people in tech for threatening their livelihood in that way. But take it from me, the people who work in tech are also concerned that their livelihoods are threatened too. I see a lot of articles in my feed about programmers or data scientists concerned that the coding skills they've spent their adult lives cultivating are also going to be obsolete. So everyone and every industry is being disrupted by this advancement of AI. And as much as we might choose to rail against that reality, the genie is out of the bottle. So as I mull all of this over in my mind, I think about principles I've learned that help me face that. And one influence I've taken as a storyteller and an artist is a deep love of the martial arts. For the past 15 years I've been practicing mixed martial arts in the tradition of Bruce Lee, arts like Muay Thai kickboxing, Filipino martial arts like Kali and Panantukan, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Savat. And I feel like the principles and the philosophy of those arts apply to a lot of other arenas in my life. Because martial arts teach you that you don't push force into force. You move like water and flow around that force or channel it in a better direction. When your opponent pushes, you don't push back, you pull. You turn challenges into opportunities and embrace them. There's always a pivot, always a better footing you can adopt to turn the momentum of the situation to your advantage. So Bruce Lee expressed this mindset in his philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, cross train in many arts. Always be learning from multiple sources. Keep what is useful, discard what is useless, and add what is uniquely your own. I apply that to my creative career by always learning new tools and going outside my comfort zone, tinkering and growing and enjoying the process of learning so that I can playfully and creatively recombine skills as needed and roll with changes like the ones presented by AI. And because martial arts by their nature make you face your own mortality and the precious fragility of life, 
They also invite an interest in philosophy and big picture spiritual stuff. So for example, Buddhist and Stoic philosophies both emphasize the impermanence of things, that change is the only constant, and the importance of accepting and adapting to change. Clinging to the way things were, or our expectations of what they should be, just causes suffering. So instead, I choose to embrace this growth mindset attitude and grow in the directions that are available to me now, and that's working for me. And if you've got a martial arts or a yoga practice that's taught you something similar, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Lately I've been learning some Wing Chun and practicing on a wooden dummy, and I heard this description of being like a sunbeam shining on a closed door, and the door is like a metaphor for your opponent's guard. The idea is you want to be like that sunbeam. The instant that door is open a crack, there's no hesitation or gap, you're already flooding through that window. So it may feel like these challenges or tech disruptions are coming at us like blows from an antagonist. And I don't want to minimize the impact, because it is impacting all of our lives as we speak. And it was hard enough making a living as an artist before these AI tools. But if there is a positive, empowering side to AI, I think we want to be like that sunbeam, just reaching right for it, without letting the negative aspects of it block us from progressing forward, forging our own path, and growing towards the best version of ourselves. This kind of philosophy is shot through the characters in the story that I'm drawing here. We've got a wise mentor character on the right side, teaching our main heroine to learn many arts and skills and weave them together in a state of readiness for anything. She teaches that learning skills effectively in sequence not only empowers you with those specific skills, but to get better at learning in general, learning how to learn and finding resilience to the unexpected by cross-training in many arts. So when these characters wake from their secret VR dream training environment here each morning, they have to face the reality and the dangers of being trapped in an AI automated prison with its own exploitative economy and power struggles. But this same adversity that reduces their freedom and threatens their lives is also the very thing prompting them to grow and change and strengthen themselves to overcome that adversity. As author Ryan Holiday says, what stands in the path becomes the path. The obstacle becomes the way. I'll wrap it up here for today. If you resonate with this vibe as a creative person and got some value from this video, thanks for dropping a like. And come check out my blog in the description for more AI art and UX design content. Thanks a lot, friends. Peace.